in Honolulu and I just got bumped. So I'm here now looking for my bags. I mean my bag, one bag. And, uh, and then I, I'm on my own, I gotta rebook. Didn't want to spend American currency uh, for a place to sleep. So uh, I ended up sleeping on concrete. Uh, I have to wait 24 hours uh, before I can uh, stand by again uh, for the next flight, which is at uh, 12 midnight tonight. So right now it's three o'clock in the morning. So I've got like 17 hours to wait. Okay, so I'm at the zoo. <clears throat> I've never been to a zoo before, so this is going to be awesome. So that's the trip. That's uh, that's the trip to the zoo. Thirty bucks. That's pretty much what it cost. Uh, about twenty-two to get in uh, to the park. Um, about five bucks uh, here on boat. Five bucks back. It's like thirty-two bucks plus. I spent about I don't know something like uh, five, six dollars on food and stuff. When you said you come from Nova Scotia, I said you. I said, oh, you come from the Whoop Whoop of Canada. <laughs> This forest, uh, just getting back to the uh, the fire, um, I guess it last four months ago, uh, there was a huge fire in the area. And what you notice on some of these trees, the tree trees are all burned. But what you notice is that there's vegetation and growth going on. And it seems that the plant, after the fire has occurred, starts sprouting from every part of the tree, not necessarily branches. Once enough vegetation is formed, and the tree with inside is starting to get uh, nutrition, water, and all that kind of stuff. It then grows leaves like a regular tree, and then loses the uh, the brush or the vegetation that it grew on the on the main stem of the the tree. So uh, we are here uh, in the Blue Mountains on a guided walking tour. So we're about uh, I don't know 45 to an hour into our little hike, and uh, it's tough. It's tough, especially when I'm wearing those. Not too much of a grip going on there. See what I mean by a tripping and falling? Always be looking down. Also, your head. Make sure you keep your head low. See what I mean? Really funky uh, monorail type deal uh, straight down we're talking 90 degrees uh, down to this walking area and uh, we're gonna go for a little walk and then take uh, some sort of a cart uh, straight up and what you just saw on the far side is uh, are the three sisters and the three sisters are uh, <clears throat> just mountain peaks three distinct mountain peaks uh, and there's a legend and a story behind it and as you can see, it's uh, 
heavily raining out, but there's quite a bit of vegetation above us to shield us from the, uh, the rain. Uh, so that thing goes straight up. So we're in uh, we're in Brisbane right now. Uh, I had a job in Sydney just uh, like uh, I don't know four days ago, but uh, I I didn't like sales. I didn't like doing it. So I ended up uh, jumping ship on the job, jumping onto a bus, and uh, 17 hours later, which is pretty much the distance from Toronto to uh, to Halifax, I ended up here in Brisbane. And uh, it's paid off because I got a job within uh, within a, a day being here. Uh, I got a job fruit picking, so uh, the risk paid off. And I'm taking off and going to um, uh, Plain Lands, I guess it is. And it cost me 10 bucks on a coffee bus to do it. So, uh, and I'll be uh, fruit picking and I'll stay there for like maybe five, six weeks or so to make some cash to carry on going up north. But the risk paid off. I had nothing, no money, no nothing in Sydney, begging for a job, and next thing you know, here I am in Brisbane, heading out to a job. So, um, back to this, what have I learned? Um, you know, I've learned that uh, I can do this, I can travel on my own. Um, so, um, the highlight of um, Brisbane so far has been, obviously, the World Cup rugby game, Fiji against the United States. That was uh, pretty awesome. The ticket was only 20 bucks, and it just blew my mind to actually be on uh, center, to be on ground level. It was just awesome. Sydney. Um, uh, definitely the, the best moment about Sydney uh, was the zoo. Um, I came here to see the animals and, you know, giraffes, Indian elephants, um, koalas, uh, deer, antelope, you know, all that kind of stuff was just awesome to see. It was just really interesting because I was sitting there trying to talk to uh, the, the gentleman that runs the hostel and uh, he said, oh yeah, sure, I can hook you up with a fruit uh, picking job right away. And I, uh, I had, you know, researched, called, um, you know, all these little places, uh, little towns that have fruit picking places all around Brisbane. Um, and each one of them told me that, you know, hey, call back in a week, call back in two weeks. Um, there's no there's no picking going on right now. And it was just kind of funny. Uh, I finally just kind of sat down and said, 25 bucks is a sweet deal for this guy to hook me up with a job. It cost me $25 to join the Backpackers Club in order for him to make a phone call, hook me up with a job. So we're talking 100 bucks. I pay them uh, at the farm 100 bucks uh, a week for lodge lodging and uh, uh, and food, which is a sweet deal, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I make thirteen, fifty, fourteen dollars an hour picking onions, whatever. Um, and hopefully, I'll be able to, uh, you know, save up enough money in the next, you know, three, four weeks to uh, to pay for, uh, you know, the trip up north. Okay, so basically, so this is an average work day. Essentially, um, we're on a fruit picking cart. As you can see, we're on lunch. We're on lunch break right now, so uh, we brought sandwiches and cookies and, and all junk food. Nobody here eats healthy because uh, it takes too much time to create healthy food, and it's too expensive. We're backpacking, so we have to penny pinch. Uh, so all President Choice, you know, items essentially what it comes down to. And the other boys are coming right now. Anyways, so this is the fruit picking little area here, as you can see, and uh, these are the little baskets we put the fruit in, and. Uh, this is the tractor right here that uh, hauls our asses. And these are the trees. So what we do is we just drive along, and as we drive along, we just reach out and we pick these nectarines. And then we take them and we just toss them in there. <laughs> it's pretty much all we do. And uh, we just keep going end to end, each side. What? Check it out.
Um, you like chips? By the way, um, me and uh, Dick, we're leaving. Dutch Dick. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the Dutch Dick. Um, yeah, it's been nice hanging out with you guys Sorry. on, on yeah. the on the trolley. Yeah, we we had a great time. Yeah, we so definitely was... had. You guys yeah. are some hardcore fruit pickers. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Like we can. We can. Dedicated your life. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss we, it we, we can. We can yeah. thin, man. We can thin. We can. You guys are some professionals in Japan. Yeah, oh, definitely. Like I'm not giving up just because it's raining, man. I'm you not. You gotta throw more at me than just some fucking rain. If right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I will remember those days. I will hold. I will hold, I will hold them close to yeah. my heart. <laughs> I'm fruit picking and loving it. It is uh, 5:30 in the morning. And I feel like shit. In about five minutes, the rest of the guys are gonna pile into the truck, and we're gonna take off and go to work. Uh, I went to bed at eight o'clock. I didn't actually fall asleep till twelve. I drank about two liters of water because our room was so hot, and my fan shut off. I've got the keys, I just nodded to Andrea, who's gonna drive, he's the German guy. I am fucking tired right now. And I have to go mix a bit. Cause I'm a construction worker, here in Bundaberg. Right here that you see, this whole field area, um, we built trussels, these steel uh, girders, steel um, roofing, basically. Um, and we're going to construct this. Uh, we've been here for about a week now, uh, building. Uh, my hands are really, really, really calloused and sore, if you can see it. Uh, very red. Um, this is our little vehicle here that, um, uh, that the backpackers hostel gives us to travel back and forth to work right now. It's a little piece of shit, but anyways, take a look at it. So I'm at the, uh, the in Bundaberg, and uh, we're at the uh, Bundaberg Rum Distillery, where they make uh, Bundaberg Rum. It's world famous. I decided, hey, you know, it's Saturday, uh, first day that I arrived here. Why not come check out the uh, the only thing that really in Bundaberg that is uh, interesting enough to see, and that's the uh, the Bundaberg Rum place. And I'm gonna get free rum too. just finished the uh, Bundaberg rum tour. It's just behind me. Anyways, the tour. Uh, I sampled the rum product soda pop. Uh, very smooth. And then I tried some draft. And uh, very smooth. But you really have to 
like the taste of the molasses because I'll tell you what they do. They cut down sugar cane trees. Once they've cut down sugar cane tree, uh, trees, they mush it up to get the uh, sugar. And then they take out like some funky sludge and they keep 75% of the product. And then filter through distillers and add water to get uh, the alcohol content. Um, so it's a molasses kind of rum kind of tasting thing. And you really have to like molasses. picture of that boat is uh, the new horizon and I shall be on that on uh, on Monday Tuesday and Wednesday three whole days of rest relaxation on a boat <laughs> 